Fresh attacks in East Ukraine have targeted a school in Donetsk, leading to several deaths today on the first day of the school year. Artis Maria Fenoshna is one of the few international journalists in the region. You may find some of the pictures coming up in her report upsetting. On the first day of school year, one of the central schools was hit. We received conflicted reports on exactly how many people have been killed, but at least one teacher, one parent and one self-defense fighter died at the scene. Later, not far from that place, a minibus was also hit and we also heard about several deaths. Overall, local militia claim 11 people have been killed. It is really hard to say who is responsible for these shellings. The army is denying any involvement while self-defense forces are claiming they are being targeted and they are not even firing back. Well, Russia's foreign ministry is calling the shelling of a school a violation of international law. Well, well all what is happening now here, well, we are witnessing now here, is a direct violation of the agreement reached earlier in September. One of the parts of this agreement was also the swap of prisoners of war between the two warring sides. And as we can see, this part is not being implemented smoothly either. Either. It may look like a positive development in Ukraine's conflict. Two warring sides, Kiev and the self-proclaimed Republic of Donetsk, sit down for talks and agree to exchange their prisoners. There have been five swaps so far, but appearances can be deceptive. Andrei came back home after the latest swap. He had been arrested by Ukraine's security service as a separatist when he tried to cross the border into Russia with his wife and in-laws including young children, just like thousands of other refugees running from the shell explosions and seeking safety. He spent a month in jail, where he was severely beaten. I was treated very badly. They even threatened to shoot me, just because I was born in the Donetsk region. That automatically makes me a terrorist and a separatist. Andrei believes there were no grounds for arresting him. He says he never killed anybody and never even carried a gun. And there are others like him. People involved in the negotiations say there are many random passengers among those released by Kiev. People were taken captive in many different ways. Some were seized on the central square in Donetsk, others taken from their homes or while walking in the market. And then these missing people suddenly appear in the custody of the security service. Lilia herself spent weeks in a Ukrainian jail, where she was threatened and assaulted. When she got out, she decided to help other prisoners return home. But she complains that Kiev is hard to deal with. She says anti-government fighters always ask for the injured first, but rarely receive them. We had a case where I was searching for a man and sent requests to several prisoner exchange programs, and it turned out that the person had died. Lilia claims the swaps are very one-sided. We hand over captives with all their personal documents and battalion numbers, but the other side don't do that. They hand over prisoners without any documents or personal belongings. If a person is seized while driving, the car is taken and not returned. Some of the soldiers being held prisoner now work in this garage. Former tank men, they repair military vehicles seized by the rebels. They were expecting Kiev to take them back in a swap, but their hopes are now fading. My own people betrayed me. Nobody is helping me. They sent a letter to my home, saying that I was already dead. No one can say for sure how many prisoners are being held by each side. But one thing many seem to be sure of is that the self-proclaimed republics have significantly more prisoners of war than the government forces. And that's led to fears that to ensure numerical parity, Kiev will need to make more arrests. Mrif Noshinati, Donetsk region in eastern Ukraine.